Hello and welcome to our Math Talino tutorial. In this video, we will tackle one-sided limits. Hindi lang po ang tao ang minsan one-sided. Ang limits, ganun din. Aww. Ano nga ba ang mga palatandaan na ang kinocompute natin ay one-sided limits? We can actually categorize one-sided limits as one-sided limit from the left commonly called as left-hand limit, and one-sided limit from the right, commonly called as right-hand limit. Here's the notation for the left-hand limit. And it can be read as the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left. Observe the negative sign at the upper right of a. It does not mean exponent of A. It just tells us that we have a left-hand limit. On the contrary, here's the notation for the right-hand limit. And read as the limit of f of x as x approaches A from the right. Again, notice the positive sign at the upper right of A. It just tells us that we have a right-hand limit. Ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng mga ito? Let's have this number line and the point where x equals a is located. Kapag ang nakasulat sa upper right ng a ay negative, it means we consider values of x that are found on the left of a. Hindi ibig sabihin na negative ang values na nasa left ni A. Depende kasi yan sa given value ni A. Kapag naman ang nakasulat ay positive sa upper right ng A, it means we consider values of X that are found on the right of A. To be more specific, suppose we have X approaches to 2 and a negative sign on the upper right. It means x values from the left of 2 or x is less than 2. If we take values of x that are less than 2, here are some sample values. 1.5, 1.8, 1.85, 1.99, and 1.999. On the contrary, if we have x approaches to 2 with a positive sign on the upper right of 2, it means x values from the right of 2 or x greater than 2. So if we take x values that are greater than 2, here are some of the sample values. 2.5, 2.2, 2.15, 2.01, and 2.001. Let's work on few examples. Evaluate the following one-sided limits. In the first one, the given is the limit of that function as x approaches to 9 from the left. Ibig sabihin, we consider values of x that are less than 9. Like for example, 8.5, 8.8, 8.9, and so on. For as long as these values are less than 9. On the other hand, we take the limit of this function as x approaches to 9 from the right. Ibig sabihin, we consider values of x that are greater than 9, like for example, 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, and so on, for as long as these values are greater than 9. So for the first one, the given is a left-hand limit. And observe that the x values that are from the left of 9 or x less than 9 are defined. Notice that kapag nag-substitute tayo ng values of x that are less than 9, so we have 9 minus a number that is less than 9, the result will obviously be positive, which means the result is a real number. That's why we said that for values of x that are less than 9, the function is defined. So, we can now evaluate the limit by substituting x equals 9 to the given function. We have limit of the square root of 9 minus x as x approaches 9 from the left is equal to the square root of 9 minus 9. We just replace x by 9. 
simplifying, we have the square root of 0 because 9 minus 9 is 0. And obviously, it is equal to 0. Hence, the limit of the square root of 9 minus x as x approaches 9 from the left is equal to 0. For the second one, the given is a right-hand limit. And if you can observe, the x values from the right of 9 or x greater than 9 are undefined. Dahil kung ma-observe natin, if we substitute values of x that are greater than 9 to this function, so 9 minus the number that is greater than 9, obviously the result will be negative, which means that the final value that we can get is always an imaginary number. Kaya nasabi natin na for x that are greater than 9, the function is not defined. Since hindi defined ang ating function for x greater than 9, its limit does not exist. Hence, we say that the limit of the square root of 9 minus x as x approaches 9 from the right is equal to d and e. So for our next example, let g be defined by g of x equals the absolute value of x if x is not equal to 0 or 1 if x is equal to 0. Evaluate the following one-sided limits. Since we have an absolute value function, take note of the definition of an absolute value of x as our reference later. So for the first one, the given limit is a left-hand limit or we take values of x that are less than 0. To evaluate the limit, we can still substitute x equals 0. So, we have the limit of the absolute value of x as x approaches 0 from the left equals to the limit of the negative of x as x approaches 0 from the left. Take note that we want to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. Ibig sabihin, we are concerned for values of x that are less than 0. And according to the definition, we apply the third one, which is the absolute value of x is equal to the negative of x. We now substitute x is equal to 0. We have the negative of 0, which is obviously equal to 0. Hence, the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 from the left is equal to 0. For the second one, the given is a right-hand limit, which means we take values of x that are greater than 0. Doing the same, take the limit by substituting x equals 0 to the first function. So we have the limit of the absolute value of x as x approaches 0 from the right which is equal to the limit of x as x approaches 0 from the right. Notice that the absolute value of x was replaced by x because we are only considering x that are greater than 0, which means that according to the definition, we take the first one. Substituting x is equal to 0, we have which is obviously equal to 0. Hence, the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 from the right is equal to 0. And for the third example, let h be defined by h of x is equal to 4 minus x squared if x is less than or equal to 1 or 2 plus x squared if x is greater than 1. Evaluate the following one-sided limits. For the first one, it is a left-hand limit. That means we take x that are less than 1. Observing the given piecewise function, for x that are less than or equal to 1, we use the first function. So, we now get the limit by substituting x is equal to 1 to the first function. We have the limit of 4 minus x squared as x approaches 1 from the left which is equal to 
4 minus 1 squared. Simplifying, we get 4 minus 1. And subtracting, we obtain 3. Hence, the limit of h of x as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to 3. For the second one, it's a right-hand limit, which means we take x that are greater than 1. Observing the given piecewise function, for x that are greater than 1, we have to use the second function, 2 plus x squared. By substituting x is equal to 1, we have the limit of 2 plus x squared as x approaches 1 from the right, which is equal to 2 plus 1 squared. Simplifying, we get 2 plus 1, and adding, we obtain 3. Hence, the limit of h of x as x approaches 1 from the right is equal to 3. Let me now present the very important theorem when we talk about limits. It states that the limit of f of x as x approaches a exists and is equal to L if and only if 1. The limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left and the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right exists. And 2. The limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right, which are both equal to L. Ibig sabihin, para mag-exist ang limit ng ating function, dapat ang left-hand limit at right-hand limit nito ay nag exist din at dapat equal ang kanilang limit. Kapag kahit isa sa mga conditions ay hindi na satisfy, ibig sabihin ang limit ay hindi nag exist So, going back with our examples, for the first one, Notice that our right-hand limit does not exist. So, condition 1 is failed. Therefore, the limit of square root of 9 minus x as x approaches 9 is equal to d and e or it does not exist. For the second one, both limits exist. So, condition 1 was satisfied. Also, both limits are equal. So, condition 2 was satisfied. We say that the limit exists, therefore, the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 is equal to 0. For our third and last example, again, both limits exist. So, condition 1 was satisfied. Also, both limits are equal. So, condition 2 was satisfied. Therefore, the limit of h of x as x approaches 1 is equal to 3. From now on, every time we evaluate the limit of a function, we must consider both sides of the limits. We need to check the left and the right hand limits. Avoid being one-sided, okay? So that's it for now. I hope you have learned from our tutorial. We will discuss infinite limits in our next video, so stay tuned. Until next time!